Famous Actors Who Damaged Their Bodies For Movie Roles In the movie Chapter 27, Jared Leto played Mark David Chapman, the fan who stalked and killed John Lennon on the streets of New York. The real Mark David Chapman was an overweight man, so Jared Leto, who is naturally thin, put on 67 pounds to make himself look more like Chapman. By the end of filming, the extra weight had given him gout and he had problems walking to the set. I'm not sure it was the wisest choice. A friend of mine was recently going to gain weight for a film and I did my best to talk him out of it. Just because you can lose the weight doesn't mean the impact it had on you isn't there anymore. The script didn't say, page one, you gained 67 pounds and you're miserable for two months. But as I started to research, I realized that the physical representation of this guy had so much to do with who he was. Tom Hanks' first foray into weight loss in the movies was for his role in the movie Philadelphia, where he played a lawyer diagnosed with AIDS who fights his wrongful termination. He would do it again in the movie Castaway, where he played a man shipwrecked on an island for four years, but this time, the weight loss put a permanent mark on his health when he was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. The gaining and losing of weight may have had something to do with it because you eat so much bad food and you don't take any exercise when you're heavy. I've talked to a number of actors who have gained weight for roles, and just out of the sheer physical toll on one's knees and shoulders, no one wants to do it again. I think that's more or less a young man's game. I'm 57 and I don't think I'm going to take on a job or even go on vacation again and see to it that I can gain 30 pounds. For the movie Syriana, George Clooney had gained a lot of weight to portray former CIA operative Robert Baer, but that was not what ruined his health. What did was a torture scene where he was tied to a chair and beaten up. The chair was kicked over and he hit his head, causing injury to his spine. He had a two and a half inch rip in the middle of his back, a half inch tear in his neck, and was leaking spinal fluid to the point where it was coming out of his nose. For about two weeks afterwards, Clooney's internal wounds were injected with blood, which basically means his spinal cord was relentlessly stuck with a needle. He was pumped with painkillers, which didn't agree with him and Vicodin obliterated his stomach, following which he spent a long stretch of time on morphine, resulting in uncontrollable anxiety. He even turned to alcohol to help him manage the pain. I was at a point where I thought, I can't exist like this, I can't actually live. I was lying in a hospital bed with an IV in my arm, unable to move, having these headaches where it feels like you're having a stroke, and for a short three week period I started to think, I may have to do something drastic about this. You start to think in terms of, you don't want to leave a mess, so go in the garage, go in the car, start the engine. It seems like the nicest way to do it. 